All right, we're back in action for the last game in this best of five series. Tied up two to two. There's no more beyond this. This series, this game determines who fights TLO in the final round of this King of the Hill tournament. The Kaspersky Arena, of course, once a month. Fantastic tournament. Or, sorry, hiccup. One sec. <laughs> Or no, it was a cough, not a hiccup, apparently. Anyways, the Kaspersky Arena is, of course, put on once a month. Thousand euro up. I, I love that these guys do it. And again, they don't ask for anything. We don't, we're not giving videos to play. We're not told to advertise them. So all we can really do is show our gratitude and thank you to Kaspersky for putting this on for us to cast once a month. Now, uh, spawning here with the series now tied up. Two to two. It is the Blue Protoss, known from Mouse Sports. It's Mouse Mana. Number left as the Red Terran. It is Millennium's 4GG. He's currently already won two series, looking to close out a third to go on to face TLO in the big money match. Yeah, you know, Zombie Urban, again, it's not like we were rooting against either of these players. We we're just making opposite predictions, but we both agree that this would probably come down to a 3 2 series one way or another. Uh, I really, I, I don't know. I gotta be honest, I don't know who I want to see versus TLO more because, quite frankly, both of these players are some of my favorite for their respective races in Europe. So for either of them to go up against the uh, the Zerg Scourge known as TLO, I, I'm okay with that. There's no there's no losers for the viewers here. There's only a loser in the game. <laughs> I want to see like the winners of the past K Kaspersky's, honestly, to see how many... Uh, oh, get like know, five what? Kaspersky winners or something? No, like uh, what races won what. Oh, I thought you meant like get like five past like King of the Hill winners or something and pit them against each actually, other. Actually, that's pretty cool too. But <laughs> that would be awesome. Teal's actually. I think this is like the third month he's been like a uh, final yeah. boss mode because of course he does so. keep winning, so they keep reinviting him. But like, who's like gone up to face the final one and who the final one was? Like, I wonder what the race distribution is like that. Because of course, we casted Zotac. It turned out surprise. Terran hasn't won. Like actual surprise, not sarcastic surprise. <laughs> Terran hasn't yeah. won one uh, until Jachi, which was yesterday. Yeah, for those who don't know who missed it, Joshi broke the two and a half year like hiatus that Terran had as far as uh, wins in the Zotac Monthly Cup. Now, Mana has put a probe up here. I don't know that this will be a proxy again, as he is going for that Nexus, but it will be here for scouting, if nothing else. Now, I did sort of start talking about it before we got into the game, and I wanted to mention, like, Belshire. This is so weird that we get Belshire on map number five, because this is the one map you see, like, again and again and again and again for game number one when players do vetoes in, like, best of three situations. I mean, Zombie Grub, I mean, I know we don't cast everything to get there, but how how many times have you seen Belcher be the first map in a pick? It's um, a lot. Like you said, I believe that Belcher is always not vetoed. <laughs> I've never seen a veto. I have to date not seen a player veto. Now it doesn't mean it's not been played because of course losers pick or what have you. But yeah, I've I've never seen this map not vetoed. Oh, the poor pro. First blood. Or no, I've never seen this map vetoed because double negatives aren't correct. <laughs> they aren't yeah. not correct. In they aren't not incorrect. Whoa. But okay, he didn't. Uh, one thing for Mana this game, he didn't. He didn't harass the command center very much. That SCP never stopped building the Marines, chased it off, and for once, 4GG like probably wipes his brow, saying, "Thank God, like <laughs> I don't have to deal with this mess." Did he scout at all? Did SCP come down? Yeah, SCP went down. So because he went for the Marine opener, right? And it wasn't an early zealot, so he didn't have to worry about that. Uh, the probe did not manage to be a little bothersome. We see Mana going for that quick Robo, so a lot uh, more linear, a lot more stable as opposed to last game. And all these games, you're right, have been really, like there are, like, games can go obviously a lot of different ways, but usually a TVP goes a certain way. But these ones have been, like, constantly surprising and constant, like, you know, back and forth, actually. Not only in the series, but mostly in the games. Well, 4GG has produced a lot of barracks up. Uh, I think he is expecting an Oracle, but Mana is not open with the Stargates. Nope. I do kind of, this has almost become like a standard opening though. Like even if you're not going to go for the two Widowmine four Marine drop, which is quite frankly probably one of the more common openers in TVP, it's good to have a lot of Marines out because whether it's a blink all in, whether it's a, a silly rush or whether it's Oracles one way or another, just having units available is what you really need to stop those in their tracks. Yeah, it's a good all-around build, honestly. Like, there are certain strengths to other builds, of course, but there's also weaknesses. But this one, it really is just, like, middle of the road in a good way. So that's why it was so stable back in Wings Liberty um, and is coming back now, and especially when it comes to dealing with those oracles that are so popular. 
Uh, now, an interesting question actually coming in through Twitter here. So we got a small lull from at Chai Guy Dreaming asking if there's anything they can do for Kaspersky in appreciation for the King of the Hill Arena aside from using their products. I don't know. I will ask the admins. Maybe they've got some insight for us. But I can guarantee you, uh, just by tuning in, you're giving them a lot of extra views. And when you're a company looking for advertisement, views are everything. So just by watching, you I mean you're already supporting them in a, in a small way at the very least. So thank you for that much from not just us at Base Trade TV, but Our I will say on behalf of them. Although I guess I probably shouldn't talk for them. <laughs> One way or another, I don't think they'd be upset if people are watching their tournament. But well, uh, yeah, so, yeah. Oh god, I hope not. Uh, but anyways, Mana, who he hadn't go for the he didn't go for the Oracle. He didn't go for a quick Colossus Bay, but it hasn't gone instead gone for the more typical opening. The one that really worked out for him that involves storms. He's got plus one armor coming up very quickly, and Zealots, of course, as we've seen multiple times today, are very difficult to deal with when they've got armor upgrades. Yeah. This is looking, this is the game that is usual. This is the TVP that, you know, we're used to seeing. Not anything else that we saw. Um, just actually getting up into that storm. Of course, I believe we saw something like this on Frost, but then things spiraled out of control when 4DG seemed to have won the game and then got counterattacked hard. That might be where we're going to, but Bellashir Vestige, it's a, I actually really like this map for Tanner, and I think 4G will be happy that this is the last map and that you can really deny a third for a very long time. And as we saw, 4G can deny a third for a long time. Like nobody's business. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, Factory being sent out to scout. It's, again, sad that this is what was the Factory at the moment. But it is just a fancy overlord that costs gas. 4GG is going to push with this. I mean, he doesn't have any medevac support. He doesn't have uh, combat shields done yet. But he does have stim. And this is quite frankly enough to get on top of that Nexus. And even if an overcharge goes off, as long as he doesn't get stormed upon... He could knock that Nexus down, but of course Mana does have Storms locked, loaded, and ready to go by the time this gets here. He's getting Vikings preemptively. He has no idea what Mana's actually doing, so those are going to be uh, pretty useless. I mean, they can take the Mosher Core, which I guess is something, but honestly, you should uh, you know, see, hey, it's not Colossus. Definitely stop making Vikings. Looks like a Doom Drop is headed. This is very common tactic, you know, into the main, and then uh, the rest of the units check the third. And will Mana be able to defend or even see this in general? Well, what's really good is if Fortune had blindly pushed into that, I really feel like that could have cost him the game. I mean, storms out this early are really unexpected. Mon, of course, did get this very quickly. Not that he skipped or cut anything to do it, but it's his priority Ooh. this time. Medivacs are trying to avoid those feedbacks. Not enough to kill the Medivacs, of course, but will severely damage them. Meanwhile, the factory being chased off by the Stalkers, and here comes that big push. He's still producing Vikings. There's two more on the way out. He would like to have Medivacs with this, but... Yeah, the big push is coming. The storms are there. One good one gets about half of the army. He has Over another one off. ready. And the Zealots, they've got charge. There's just no way to really connect this. You can try and kite them around, sure, but we see 4GG immediately stopping Viking production and investing in a Ghost Academy, something that we haven't actually seen in any series so far today. Yeah, on Frost, he chose to just have an overwhelming amount of units off of five racks very quickly. Uh, of course, delayed the Ghost Academy for a very long time, but now uh, he's probably still going to put on the aggression. He's not going to leave, but he's going to be more careful because he doesn't want to wait for those Ghosts to really, uh, you know, get those really great snipes or EMPs. Yeah, it's it's always a bit fickle trying to trade with this, but Ghosts are a long way off for now. Mana has to hold off this push. Vikings on the ground will soak a lot of damage. They're not meant to deal a lot of damage, but they do pack a punch. It's uh, oh, about time that Overcharge ran out, so 4GG might consider pushing him, but decides to withdraw. Just to the Zonaga, I feel. He's not spotting the third, which I feel is also a mistake. Oh, mana. And there's a Warp Prism on the left yep. side. Now, this is something that can really catch 4GG off guard. It doesn't take a lot of Zealots to really wreck a mineral line. And the sad thing is, it's a lot easier for, say, a Protoss player to warp in and deal with the drop of a Terran player than it is for a Terran player to produce to deal with the warp in of a Protoss player. This yeah. is going to be a bit rough to deal with this drop, I fear. But sitting oh, at home right now, has to make sure he doesn't overextend. I mean, he might not have the overcharge, but he needs to fight in this choke. There's a lot of storms, at least five right there. So Fortune needs to be so careful. The drop really wants to get off. It really does, but it just can't get uh, you know, past the feedback and all of those zealots, so it's not really worth it. Warfism goes in, he sees it, and immediately pulls his entire army back, knowing that you know four zealots you know, was probably going to be dealt with, but if he warped in, it would have been disastrous. Yeah, I actually like this too, Adamana. It might not get a lot of damage done, but this 
like you said, brought the army back. That's the time he needs to get more out of the home to defend against whatever's coming. I mean, the Colossus Bay has only just started. The more time he buys, the, the better chance that those will actually be available and ready to fight. Third base is being taken from Mana 2, which in any other scenario might be considered dangerous, but uh, due to the way overcharge, the Photon Overcharge works, this might work out better having out earlier than later. Yeah, well, that's definitely a good point. It's why I wish that 4GG had something over there spotting that so he knows that this is the time where I can do even triple pong attacks, which can happen and can be very effective if controlled correctly. But now it's going to get up, and he's, there's not really much you can do. I mean, you can obviously still try and take it down, but it's a lot easier when it's not, it doesn't have the, uh, the cannon and all the SimCity and stuff. EMPs are going to be really nice too. I mean, even if they don't hit the uh, Templar, one of the big things, of course, is the Zealot will have their shield stripped off. It's basically like doing a blanket 50 damage to everything. Archons, of course, are going to absolutely need to have their shield stripped away. But, uh, okay, apparently we're having our couch replaced today or something. It's just been taken out the front door. <laughs> Sorry, it's just random. Taken. Yeah, I just walked in the house. They're like, all right, we're going to take this couch, leave all the valuables behind. And he's going to push in here with a small amount, looks to snipe off a couple of the Templar, but. Uh, here come the ghosts, and it looks like, oh, he's actually not going to use them. They even take it out by those Archons. And so these storms are still available. No EMPs go off, no snipes go down, and uh, the storm is a big whiff. But in the end, uh, the big thing is he got a lot of those ghosts out of the, like, out of play. He's not going to have to deal with as many EMPs. It's very unfortunate. That, was just, uh, that wasn't the greatest control ever, unfortunately. Still has three more, and that's definitely enough to EMP or just snipe, because... There's only two high Templars, and in fact, the Marines snipe one of them. Oh, that time warp was kind of cool. On top of the Ghost, this will ensure that they died to the Zealots instead of getting away. The Archons! They're stuck! So many Zealots and Archons are stuck behind there, but oh, two more high Templars ghosts. come back. The Ghosts are all gone now, Zombie Grub. That was worthwhile, even though he got stuck, even though it was awkward. Now it's just Marines running from storms, and of course, about a quarter of the Marines die there, and the other half are just almost dead. So, has to heal up. 4GG's push has been stopped, and his third base for Mana is happily mining. Uh, the third just went down for 4 GG. It's currently 46 SCVs to 61 probes. Of course, he's going to have to transfer a lot from the main, which is pretty much mined out at this point. Leaving him uh, a good SCV count, honestly, for two bases. There's no cloak oh, no, going down, which is something this is usually awkward. Yeah, with the Colossus coming out, too, uh, with the constant investment in Ghosts, it's not like they'll be bad. Again, Viking Ghost is kind of like the penultimate composition most of the time, but uh, he's not going uh, oh, no! to deal with this beautiful storm, so those Marines... R-E-K-T. Oh, he's down by 50 supply right now. Uh, this is not looking good for 4 GG. Oh, third base. Third base and uh, attack by back. a couple of zealots, but... Ah, uh, Ghost should be able to clean this up. Man, Ghost hits so hard. I just wish they didn't cost so much. I would love to see Ghost more commonly used, but... They are really good units, of course, so their cost does make sense. Oh, the upgrades have been really great for Mono this entire time, by the way. It's currently 3-2 versus just 1-1. One, one. No, it's going to be 2-1 soon, but still. Well, the uh, pylon will finally be dealt with. A couple more zealots going to warp in, but here comes the horde of zealots behind this. EMPs do go off quite nicely, but a couple storms are waiting behind this. All the energy has been used to EMP the zealots. Now there's none left for the Templar. And, of course, the Immortals still have <laughs> no counter to them. The Colossus does go down, but good game will be called, and Mana will take the series from 4GG. 3-2. Rifkin guessed correctly. Well, let's be honest. I just picked the other one because you picked 4GG. But still, that's going to send Mana into fight. Oh, no, well, first off, Mana... Well, guys, let's let's summarize this real quick. First off, 4GG walks away today with 300 euro. That's not that's not a bad prize for losing. Uh, he, of course, won those first two series to earn it. So Mana just locked down 300 euro himself. And this final best of five versus TLO at the top of the King of the Hill will be worth 400 euro. So we'll see who reigns supreme today, who is going to be the king of this month's hill. Man, that was so cheesy. I'm sorry for saying that. As, as it was leaving my mouth, I was like, shut up, Rifkin. <laughs> but guys, <laughs> we're going to toss out to some ads. We will see you in a few moments, in a few minutes, for the final best of three. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you shortly.